catastrophe for ambulances arriving on time, people being left, literally they're claiming up to 50,000 older people dying, I'm not sure of the figures, because we're so short Staff. In we some should... cases, ambulances have taken two days. It's, it, is, it is, but that is where we are after a decade of, I'm sorry, austerity politics. I want to get into Tory bashing this early in the morning, but that's a concrete decision of the government. And it's exactly the same problem in that we used to be part, be part of a general pool of European doctors and nurses and care workers. That was shut down by Boris Johnson. And now we're importing them from Nigeria. India, Pakistan, Philippines. I'm not against them. I've probably been treated by doctors from all over the world all my life. My kids have. But I heard a lovely Indian lady on, uh, I think, the BBC uh, a couple of months ago say, oh, that's wonderful. They're recruiting me as a doctor. I can bring over my ch ch two children and I can settle in the UK. The doctors who came in from Poland and elsewhere sort of went backwards and forwards. There's a European-wide pool of trained medical personnel and except we are spending a fortune and we're increasing the number of immigrants coming into Britain simply from, from thousands of miles away simply because of the obsession with just turning our backs on any relationship with Europe. But, but it's fascinating, though, isn't it, that Keir Starmer has taken what is a, a pretty sort of brexit -y line in saying, well, immigration is not the answer to solve problems within the NHS. Uh, open border policy, well... We've heard this before, but to, to, to hear it loud and clear, open border policy is not something he would support. I mean, it's, you know, it's coming out with a clearly to try and pull over Tory voters. Yes, yeah, so, so, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, he talks about a fair points-based system, but here I have the government's press release issued exactly two years ago. We are ending free movement and we'll bring in a firm and fair points-based system. Now, I don't know if they were copying Keir Starmer two years ago or he's copying them. Well, he's copying uh, them, isn't he, let's be honest. But we're moving in a circle and at the same time, people are just waiting. Uh, my, one of my, my left knee from a skiing accident isn't quite as great as it was when I was an altar boy. Uh, and maybe I'll need an you operation. You were an altar boy? <laughs> I was a very, very good altar boy. Uh, I might need an operation. We have to wait forever. Mm. And that is because uh, we can talk about training up doctors. How long does it take to train a surgeon in this country to be really top of the grade? Look, 10, Both. 12 years. Exactly. So you can announce that now. It's not going to happen long after Rishi Sunak's gone. I hope Sakir's the Prime Minister after he's gone. And we have failed to train. I've heard this all so, my so, life. So Keir Starmer's wrong, is he, when he criticises the government for sticking plaster solutions? When you're no, me, oh no, he, no, because you're saying, aren't you? No, right, all well and good. Get so Keir's saying, get people trained up and recruited and all the rest of it. Great, but we're going to need sticking plaster solutions in the meantime. Well, aren't we? I, I think we're going to need to look after our people, especially with a rapidly aging population, and broadly speaking. 90% uh, of all the medical or hospital visits you'll need are between the ages of about six months and 70 or 80 years. And after that, they really start piling in. And it's the same problem everywhere in Europe and in America. Go to America, there are lots and lots of doctors from outside the States working there. And to shut off, I don't, nobody's talking about a rejoin or a return to total free movement, but to shut off all the access to men and women who've been properly trained. We used to send recruitment teams to Portugal for our nurses. Shouldn't something as important as the NHS, and we hold it so close to our heart, don't we, um, something as important and fundamental as healthcare in this country um, be actually governed by a cross-party governing body? Because time and again when you talk about this with anybody, whether they're Tory, whether they're Labour or whatever they think they are, they actually think it's too important to just leave to politics. And anyway, politics is so short-lived, you can have a government in for a very short period of time. They tinker with the NHS. Whatever they do, they're always accused of tinkering with it. There are no long-term solutions, and something like the NHS needs a long-term strategy. It sure does. I mean, here's the current most important tool the NHS is issuing in parts of the country. It's called a pair of pliers. It's because in parts of the country, Devon, Cornwall, and rather more remote areas, there's a complete shortage of NHS dentists. And people 
No, the reports are there on, yes, on all the yes, TV yes, programmes. Uh, this well, is now... This is, this, this, is, this, this is what Rishi Sunak's sending out. You know, the old people just put this in there, <clears throat> pull it out, put the old Kleenex on, and on you go. And that is a state we're reduced to, but there's no real concern about it. There was a moment... I mean, Tony Blair had the mother and father of all rows with Gordon Brown, and he took on the Treasury, the blob, and said increase health care spending. And Brown, fam Gordon famously said to him, you've ruined my effing budget. And Tony was proud to do it. Mm. But then we had George Osborne, then we had austerity, and now we've got Brexit. And so we're just... I mean, I worry that there are people in, on the right of the Conservative Party, you know, the, the Goldman Sachs gang, the hedge fundies, they'd love us to move to an American type of privatised health care system.